start with a question. And you have to put your hands right up because it's very dark. How many of you think that business today is a force for good? <laughs> okay, not only do we have no hands, you burst out laughing, all right? <laughs> Let me ask hopefully a more inspiring question. How many of you think business should be a force for good in the world? All right, every hand. You know, when you think of the resources and the reach and the wealth and the talent and the dynamism of business, for me, the fact that business should be a leading and committed player to addressing the world's most challenging problems is the cutting edge of common sense. It is so obvious, and I believe it so much, like every single one of you in this audience, that I created a group of companies called the Wild Hearts Group. I didn't know there was a global movement called social business. For me, it was just the right thing to do. And the Wild Hearts Group, through its activities and its profits, empower people globally. One thing I'm so proud of, because it was a dream of mine when I started, is this year we announced that we just transformed one million lives. But what I found is when, like so many of you today, when you have an inspiration, a passion to do something, you you're not thinking logically, something's driving you, but on my journey, I discovered that I wasn't alone. There is a fundamental shift in what people expect from businesses and those who lead them, and I am so inspired by it. But you won't see it in the press. You have to seek out the research. It is a silent wave of change. Look at these numbers. 84% of consumers believe that business should do more for society. Now, I always like to put numbers behind things in terms of hard cash, right? If a company gets that right, they can increase their bottom line by 20%. 20% increase in revenues by serving the world in an authentic way. Impact your future talent. 82% of millennials whose organization's values resonate with them will stay for more than five years. The biggest challenge that heads of talent say to me is that young, brilliant people, when they join, they do the grad program, then they leave. It's a major business problem. Yet, if they relate to their values, they'll stay. 75% of millennials would take a pay cut to work for a more responsible company. Now, that's commitment. And look at the last one. Current workers, your team, 86%, want their employer to be responsible to society. If a company gets that right, they can reduce their staff turnover by 50%. It is the equivalent of a two, almost two and a half grand pay rise per member of staff. You know, what those numbers say to me, I call them compassionate disruption. You see, the role of the chief exec is you have to always be scanning the horizon, looking for opportunities and threats. That's your job, to see as far into the future as you can. I mean, everybody's aware about the rise of AI and robotics, and we're all concerned about political turmoil. But you won't see headlines shouting this. But the chief exec of the business who ignores this will cease to be relevant because people's attitudes have changed who they want to work for and who they want to buy from. <laughs> I find that so inspiring. But the good news is the vast majority of enlightened business leaders I work with, the ones that deserve that title, they get it. You know, it's easy to portray business people as like kind of sons of Satan in the press. That's just a tiresome cliche. These people have kids. These people care about the future just the way we do. Of course they do. It's a stupid statement to make. And so many of them have almost got a new lease of life that they can contribute to their own values. They can create a more worthy world for their kids through their businesses. And one thing that has given real impetus to this is the United Nations Global Goals. It's a common language for everybody to speak and focus. I call it the world's greatest to-do list. Right? So whether it's quality education or gender equality or life below water, it's a language for governments and educationists and businesses to speak. And I get to have the privilege of working with business leaders who are enthusiastically saying, we're focusing on life on land or we're focusing on gender equality. And it's what they're most passionate about, while they are still doing the job they were doing before, but with a renewed sense of purpose. And the stats here are really exciting too. In line with what we've looked at before, 90% of consumers want companies to address the global goals, but 70% are going to embed them into their business practices for the next five years. So the world is changing. Okay, 
So you go, all right, we get it. That's a lot of stats. You're talking about a, a change in people's attitudes from a theoretical point of view, perhaps. But how do you do it? The devil's in the detail. How do you harness the power of business to help people in a credible, sustainable way with maximum impact? So let's come to an issue which something which I'm very, very passionate about. It's one of the most serious issues that faces the world. It's so serious that the United Nations said that if we were to address it fully, it is the closest thing you can get to a silver bullet for addressing a whole multitude of scourges that face humanity, injustices. Then we know what it is. One thing. Of course, there's so many issues in the world, but it's one thing that if we were to address, we'd have a massive change. Education of girls. What a great disgrace that I have to stand here and still talk about education of girls as if it's an issue. How bizarre. Let me tell you the implications for a girl if she doesn't receive an education in Sub-Saharan Africa. She's three times more likely to contract HIV. She's more likely to be trafficked. Her child has 50% less chance of surviving past the age of five. She's more likely to be a child bride. An uneducated girl has an average, average of eight kids. An educated girl has an average of two. And on and on and on. It is a moral crime, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not just the, the repulsive injustice of what the girl faces, but I am a product of brilliant women. My mother set up a business when I was three. I have no brothers. I wanted to emulate my sisters who followed in my mother's footsteps. We impoverished the world by not educating girls because we rob men of inspiring female role models too. I shudder to think what I would be if it wasn't for my mother and my sisters. What if they dropped out of school? So this is a serious issue. The old way of thinking would say, well, that's a government issue. That's a charity issue. But business has got nothing to do with that. And we were wrong. And let me give you an exact example of what I'm talking about. This is the magic box. All right, so there's a thing that businesses have to do which is business critical and legally compliant. It's very serious and it's very dry. They have to store their documents. They have to store your data legally. They have to store it in the right way. And one of our businesses has warehouses like skyscrapers throughout sub-Saharan Africa and throughout Britain, storing these boxes with all sorts of documents in it for the government and big corporates. So there's a business, okay? Right, well, what's your point, Mick? Business over here, storing documents. Let me put this issue with girls. But in South Africa, this box, traveling in the van, passes the schools in the most remote areas of the country. The place where the hardest to reach girls, the most vulnerable girls are, our vans pass them daily, weekly, monthly. It costs millions of pounds a year for that infrastructure, just part of business. With this new, enlightened way of thinking, what if the business leader said, well, wait a minute, the van's going empty, the boxes are empty. What could we take in the box? In this box is a product that ensures that when a girl gets to go to school, she stays there. What's in the box? Anybody? Are you ready? You can see some very excited little faces here. You think it's like a game show or something? A reusable sanitary pad. Manufactured by at-risk girls in South Africa, designed by women in South Africa, and distributed to the most vulnerable girls because a third of girls drop out of school in South Africa because of their periods. Can you believe that? Their periods. Now, it would cost the charge to our government millions just for the infrastructure, never mind the running of it. But all it takes is business to go, wait a minute, we can do this. That's one small example that's having an effect already on tens of thousands of girls. And it doesn't cost the government or charities or you anything. We were doing it anyway. We just reimagined what business could be. And so what I want to say to you, I love this. This means the heart of the girl in the causal language. Point of interest, it's such a taboo subject, we can't even mention sanitary pads on the packaging. Isn't that bizarre? And these are some of the girls receiving the pads. So when it comes to their periods, they won't drop out anymore because of a simple reimagining of resource. My message to business leaders is reimagine your role in the world. Reimagine what your resources can be. Reimagine your responsibilities of what you should be doing. 
as servants of the world rather than extractors of wealth. That's what the future looks like. So, where do we go from here? World Health has transformed over a million lives. We're just getting started, but imagine if we could inspire the next generation of business leaders, inspire a thousand to transform a million lives, and then another thousand, and another thousand. And that's why last year we launched the Global Youth Ambassador Movement at the United Nations in Geneva. We're providing world-class, multi-award winning entrepreneurial education to young people free of charge. Not because it won't be postcode they were born into free access for every young person. To inspire a generation of business leaders who will see economic excellence and top business performance and being a servant of humanity and a custodian of the world as one in the same. It's the new normal. How could you not be? And if we do that, how many problems that seem insurmountable will just evaporate? Let me give you three examples. I just saw it last week. One team of boys reached out to the local school using the entrepreneurial system we taught them of thinking as peace ambassadors and stopped the violence in the local community. A team of girls have instilled beehives in the roofs of their school to address the decline in the bee population. And others are recycling the food waste into compost to grow vegetables, to teach kids about health eating and then making soup for the local homeless. And they're 10 years old. 10 year olds eliminating violence in their communities because they're empowered to do so. What kind of leaders will they grow up to become? That's the future I'm committed to. That's the future that I'm so passionate about playing my part in delivering. And whether they're 10 year olds in high school or going into university like our ambassadors in University College London or International School of Geneva, if we inspire a generation to reimagine what business can be, we will inspire the business leaders our world deserves. Thank you very much.